Welcome back to America Right Now. I'm Tom Basile. Cars, computers, technology, aircraft, and oil. As a nation, we export so many things that are critical to life on the planet. Our most important exports, however, are our values. Today, intolerance, amplified by our caustic digital culture, has made protecting religious liberty at home more challenging. But the incoming Trump administration can help quell domestic forces seeking to attack our first freedom. There's never been an assault on Catholics the likes of which they're having right now, what they're having to go through. Biden's corrupt DOJ has targeted parents at school board meetings. They've sent SWAT teams to arrest pro-life activists. You know that. The FBI has been caught labeling devout Catholics as domestic terrorists and sending undercover spies into Catholic churches, just as it was in the old Soviet Union days. Pretty rough stuff. Who can believe this? President-elect Trump's commitment to dismantling the government censorship complex and cancel culture provides this country with the moral footing to reinforce religious freedom again at home and therefore around the world. Religious freedom is our first freedom. It is the freedom the pilgrims sailed to ensure that they and their descendants would have. Our founders understood the importance of religious liberty to the fabric of the republic. Religious liberty is the bedrock upon which free speech and the Bill of Rights are built. Without the ability to worship God as you see fit, without fear of oppression from the state, true free speech simply can't exist. In recent times, a culture of fear has been driven by powerful voices in the media and Hollywood, the left-wing political ecosystem, the education complex, as well as the shadowy work of unelected, unaccountable bureaucrats. During the last five years, Americans have been horrified by the demonizing and the ridiculing of people of faith. And it goes far beyond the FBI's covert efforts to infiltrate and monitor Catholic churches. The Biden administration and left-wing governors openly and notoriously attempted to eviscerate the sincerely held religious beliefs of millions of Americans to force them under penalty of losing their livelihoods to take the COVID jabs that the government knew did not prevent transmission or infection. Pro-life protesters have received harsher punishments, including years in jail for blocking abortion centers while BLM rioters have walked free. Anti-Semitic protesters have been tolerated on hundreds of college campuses. Hate crimes against Jews have skyrocketed. Recently, the Associated Press ran a story based on comments from one source suggesting that Trump Defense Secretary nominee Pete Hegseth should be considered alt-right or an insider threat because of his tattoos of the Jerusalem cross and the phrase Deus Vult. The AP, perhaps not surprisingly, failed to include any sources to refute claims that those symbols connote white supremacism. And by the way, not for nothing, for nearly a thousand years, the Jerusalem cross has symbolized the five wounds of Christ, or alternatively, the four evangelists and Christ himself. It's also a symbol of the Holy Land and worn by the Order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem, a lay order of knighthood under the protection of the Pope. Deus Volt or Deus Lobot is also an ancient motto of the order and associated with protection of the people and the places of the greater Holy Land. This distortion is just another example of the permissiveness and the normalization of anti-Christian and anti-Catholic bigotry in our society. Now, the domestic situation may be perilous, but the global state of religious liberty in the absence of U.S. leadership is even more troubling. According to the Religious Freedom Institute, in three of the last four years during the Biden administration, the number of nations where there is a negative trajectory in terms of religious liberty has increased year over year, while those improving have consistently decreased. Anti-Semitic protests, riots and attacks have dramatically increased globally since the October 7th massacre in Israel. According to Open Doors, more than 365 million Christians in the world, or one in seven, face high levels of persecution for their faith. And of course, the human cost of attacks by Muslims against other factions within their own religion is incalculable. The world's largest country, communist China, in, in there it, it's illegal for children under 18 to attend church. Government registration for worship is required and digital persecution is widespread as a component of the country's social credit system. Churches are monitored and can be shut down without warning. Religious intolerance globally matters because it has historically been a companion to democide, 
and other aspects of the societal collapse that helps breed authoritarianism. Integrating religious liberty benchmarks into our diplomacy is therefore critical to global stability. The Trump administration's recommitment to religious liberty at home and abroad will provide assurance to not only Americans, but billions around the world that this cornerstone of free and advanced societies is not fading, but rather affirmed. Advancing religious freedom isn't about military adventurism or sledgehammer diplomacy. It is simply recognizing the indisputable truth that more tolerant societies are freer, more peaceful, and more resistant to the march of communism and authoritarianism that is a growing global calamity. The left in America has a perverted view of freedom and religion, consistently espousing that we should be free from religion. If we do that, we shall neither enjoy freedom nor religion. Yes, getting the border under control and tax cuts and closing the deficit, they're all critically important goals for President-elect Trump. We should pray, however, that our first freedom, again, will be revered, celebrated, and exported as well. All right, folks, much more America right now when we return.